Hi, and welcome to this video, which introduces to you to Application Insights, the insights it provides from out of the box into your own code, how you can search your code on demand, create custom insights, and also introduces you to regular expressions. My name is Florian Vogler, and I'm your host for today. This video is for you if you want to understand the value of code insights that Panagenda Application Insights provides from out of the box. You should also watch the video if you want to understand how to perform custom code searches. And lastly, if you want to learn how to best create your own code patterns, become a Custom Insights Regular Expression Jedi, then this video is definitely for you. From out of the box, Application Insights provides 80, 68 search patterns that cover over 280 keywords across Formula, LotusScript, Java, and JavaScript code. Those patterns are categorized into seven primary rule sets that you can see here on the right-hand side, which range from showing you dependencies on other databases, mail dependencies, special interfaces, and various more. Inside each rule set, you will find different insights. And the insights can be of value for a lot of other topics which may be different from the respective category they are in. For example, when moving applications to the cloud, you may want to look at some of the insights in the rule sets, dependencies, and other databases, operating system dependencies, and special interfaces. When it comes to modernizing applications, you may want to look again at dependencies and other databases, as well as special interfaces and the web design rule set. For optimization, you should have a good look at all the insights provided by the specific code findings rule set. And last but not least, for migration purposes, take a good look at mail dependencies and special interfaces. These are just a couple of examples, and when you further explore the different rule sets and all the insights that they contain, then we're sure you'll find good value in what Application Insights provides from out of the box. Before we jump further into code analysis, code searching, and code insights, don't forget usage and similarity, where Application Insights provides you with great insights. As a simple example, a very complex database may not need attention if it isn't used by anybody. You may also want to look at most used and most complex applications first, so in essence, combining usage with complexity insights. Also, when moving to the cloud, you may want to leave databases on premises that are used by, for example, HR and legal. You may want to archive unused databases before further exploring um, all the code across all your databases in all the detail. When it comes to similarity, one of the great aspects is that modernizing one database may also cover tens to hundreds of similar designs. On the right-hand side, you see a database cluster where there is a total of 20 databases, all of which don't have 100% same design, but they are so similar that once you've modernized one of them, pretty much all of them are covered and only require some fine tuning on the delta. Also, similarity allows you to identify template candidates independent of design inheritance settings. So no matter whether databases have a template set or are set to be a template, we detect how your template and design inheritance um, is actually configured to then suggest template candidates to you that if you modernize them, you've got all the similar designs covered too. Now let's start with code search. In Application Insights, there is a section called Code Search. And we start with Code Search to get a first understanding of all the code and how to best search for it in your particular environment. Also, the huge benefit of code search is that it, that it gives you instant, instant results, whereas custom insights run overnight. So typically, you would start to search your code with code search. And then when the results are satisfactory and you want that to be repeated across all of your databases, then you turn that into custom insights. In code search, you typically have three options to search, which is text search, whole word only, and regular expression. Here's a perfect example where we're looking for the word test. Now, when looking for test, it will find test in any string 
um, not just as the word test. And what you can see here is that here we have a minute string, and here we have a notes timer, not a note test timer, but a notes timer. And um, you can see that most probably you would have wanted to see the word test, and that's what, in this particular example, whole word only would come in very handy. So let's switch this exact search to whole word only. And you can see that we now find much better results that suggest the word test not being part of other words, but standing on its own. Now, before we move on to searching with regular expressions, um, let's first lay the basics of how code is actually searched and prepared for your search. Here you find a Lotus script code block that consists of a comment section at the very beginning, and then the sub initialize function followed by code, and then the end sub. In essence, when searching for code, we remove all remarks, whether being encapsulated in percent rem and rem, or being appended to a line with apostrophes, or being things like a normal rem line that's being removed. Leading, trailing, and duplicate white space is excluded too. So in this particular example, there was a lot of white space after notes database, so as in many blanks. And there were also multiple blanks in between the dim and db, etc. And there's also blanks in front of each line inside of the code block, all of which is removed, which makes searching a whole lot easier. The result of what you are searching against is in essence kind of a code block with all comments removed or white space removed. So you don't have to cater for repeating white space um, for just searching your code base. There's an exception to this that we will cover, but in general, just searching into your code is as easy as not having to worry about leading and trailing white space, comments, and other things. What you'll also notice here is a very rare out of coding uh, to, for example, get a view in a database, but um, actually moving the parameter in that case to a second line, and then even adding a comment um, you know, into the first line. So although this code is spread across two lines, um, in this particular case, you can still add comments to the first one. That would make um, searching for code tremendously difficult in understanding what, for example, the view name would be for a get view Lotus script command. In essence, as said, this makes searching a whole lot easier because we're removing everything that otherwise creates quite a lot of headache. There's an exception to this, and we'll get to that. And for all the pen agenda rule set that are provided from within Application Insights, we make sure that results are displayed correctly too by means of highlighting and showing you where your particular findings are. Keep in mind that one line of code can span across multiple lines. We'll see that a couple of, uh, of times in the remainder of this video. And that when searching for code, it's not so much how you would code or how you think other people code, but it's more about how people can code given the power of Domino Designer. And there's quite a mind boggling uh, number of options uh, when it comes to um, coding things across multiple lines and other things. Naturally, if you're just looking at you know, a smaller environment, all of which you have developed, then you can certainly search your code base um, like how you coded it. But if there are databases that you are um, analyzing that you didn't develop, then it's important to get this right. Now, let's look at another type of code search where uh, we just discovered that there could be commands where or actually code that spreads across multiple lines, which in Dota script is then separated with the underscore and a new line. And so what we're doing here is we're searching for just a blank and a new line. Uh, so the red square here uh, suggests that there's a blank. And when we do that, we find uh, a number of findings where the first um, match here actually contains two such multi-line separators. However, we also get false positives where here's a field name that starts with an underscore. So actually what we would be searching for isn't so much a blank and a new line, but it would be 
at least a blank and a new line followed um, a blank and an underscore, sorry, followed by a new line. So this is what that would look like for in regular expressions that you uh, simply, you know, type in a blank and a new and an underscore and then a new line. So backslash n would be the new line here. And the prefixing dot star question mark are just so that we also see what's in front of the blank underscore to actually read the code. Had we omitted the first part here, then we would only get blank underscores as results, which doesn't tell you all too much. But you can see that by using the power of regular expressions, we now get good results. Now, before we continue, you just saw your first regular expression, kind of, um, unless you're already um, a regular expression Padawan or Jedi. And before you think, in, well, this could get complex uh, or whatever, um, let's remind ourselves that without regular expressions, you can already now search your entire code base for hard-coded usernames, server names, file paths, replica IDs, names of script libraries, functions, classes, variables, any strings in code like Notes UI or ODBC. So you don't have to further dig into regular expressions to really get value out of application insights and the code search functionality. Go test that for yourself, and when you're ready, come back here, or dare to continue on. What follows is more regular expressions in this video, a demo, and a fairly steep learning curve. But as Yoda said, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose, or fear is the path to the dark side. So don't fear, and we'll dive right into this together. Now, when it comes to regular expressions, um, then the regular expression engine used um, for application insights, um, in the easiest sense, is TCLR. And that just has implications as to what all commands um, or things you can do with those regular expressions. For example, there are different flavors of regular expression en engines like um, Perl regular expressions and others. And when you want to know whether a pattern would work in Application Insights, make sure that it works with TCLR. Here you can then see an example of searching for the word beep versus um, making sure that each line of code kind of starts with beep and then ends with it uh, right after the beep versus enabling multi-line searching and then having start of line and end of line right before and after the beep. And lastly, allowing for some white space before and after the beep, together with what we saw earlier. Now, if you just search for beep, then that is a kind of substring match, and anything can come before that. So uh, beep will find beep, and my beep, and you beep, and no beep, and beep beep, and pretty much anything that contains the word beep. So whilst it's very powerful to just start without specifying whether a line should not have anything after what you're looking for, or before it, um, that could easily come up with many um, false positives. The second option, where you encapsulate the beep into a carrot and a dollar, will usually find nothing unless a whole code block is just beep. Um, we'll see some of that a little bit later, but typically when you think of a load of script code block, which would be sub-initialized and sub, and then a beep in between, um, that would not be found because the whole code block also contains before mentioned sub initialize and sub or sub click and click um, and in most cases other stuff would behave the same. So if you want to actually search all code lines across all code blocks then what you need to do is you have to prefix your search with a question mark w in round brackets. That will essentially find every single line of code that contains nothing but the word beep. So no beep bracket open bracket close or a parameter or my beep or whatever, but just beep. Nothing but that. And we'll see that in just a minute. Lastly, you could end up with a situation where um, the code line that contains beep has a certain number of blanks before or after it. Not so much in the searching because we learned earlier that we remove all leading and trailing white space. Um, from every single line of code, but when it comes to visualizing your findings, we again display the original code. So to make a search 
not just find the right thing, you then have to cater it for the support of white space because the visualization of the results in the code then requires us to match the original line of code, which again contains um, pretty much everything that we further, that we earlier on removed. So with very few exceptions, it's a good idea to always start your regular expressions with a question mark W in round brackets, especially whenever you're using a carrot or a dollar in your query. So if you want to signal to your search, here's what the line should end with, or um, here's what the line should begin with, then make sure you add a question mark W in front as the modifier. Now, I've been talking your ears off, and um, let's look into all of what we just talked about in a live demo. So for that, we're switching over to Application Insights, which um, greets you with its uh, normal dashboard here, and I'm not going to go into those details. But what we will do now is we'll essentially dive first into the overall design complexity of this environment, which contains 9.5 million lines of code. So just to understand when you were carrying out searches, what you're about to see will investigate 9.5 million lines of code. Um, the performance uh, pretty much is as fast as what we'll, we're demoing in this video, um, even in extreme large environments. Now let's move on right into code search. And what we'll start with is essentially we'll search for help. We'll start in doing so with text search, just to again demonstrate that uh, if you do that, you get lots of results that just contain the word help, but could be part of um, a larger word. Now let's switch right into regular expressions and just do the exact same thing. And the first thing that I talked about earlier was when you just search for a regular expression without um, adding stuff to the front, then all you'll get is just tons of results that just say, I found help, and then you have to open up each of those results, which is fairly boring. So what we will do here is essentially kind of do the same as what a text search would be, is saying, well, I want to search for help and then just find, uh, you know, find me everything in front and the back before and after that, which is pretty much the same as just doing a text uh, search for help with nothing else. Now, what we can start with is actually just search for blank help. So I'm adding a blank right here in the front and see where that gets us. Just to understand, we're you know, kind of mimicking this. And again, you can see that I did the mistake of saying, well, you know, um, I don't want to see the rest of the line. So let's start with, I want to see the rest of the line from the very beginning, then a blank and a help. And I also want to see what comes right after that. So let's search again. And you now can see um, that we find things like name, blank, help, or address, help, or a similar thing. So all of that is now visualized properly. In the same sense, you could also say, well, what I want to do now actually is use the example that we had earlier, and I want to search for code blocks that just contain the word help. And interestingly enough, in this particular environment, we find one particular code block that contains no other code than the word help, which is in a field help underscore. So in essence, it's a field that contains a formula um, that just references the, uh, a different field called help. Once again, we want to look for essentially more, and now we'll go for a blank help. Now, if I narrow this further down, we won't find anything. So again, as a reminder, when you want to look across all lines of code and you use caret and or dollar in your searches, add the question mark W. And we're not getting anywhere because in essence, um, we stripped out white space. And what I need to do is essentially look for more than just the word help. So let's do this again. And off we go. And again, we're back to you know finding anything that con contains the word help. But it, we also find things like helper. Now that's maybe not what we want. So other things that we can essentially do here is we could say where I would like something to begin with either um, a quote or a blank. And then again, after that, um, contain pretty much anything. But I want this to also end with a quote or a blank. And off we go. 
So now what we find is things like blank help quote. We should also be able to find things like quote, help quote, or um, blank help blank. So that's just one particular example of how to further dig into your code and even use things like or and variant. Now, let's move back into the slide deck. And we're now heading for a really steep learning curve where I'm going to explain one of the most complex patterns inside of Application Insights, which essentially looks for dependencies and other databases for at DB lookup um, and at DB column. Um, but it needs to cater for various things of how DB lookups and DB columns can be coded um, and stuff that we essentially don't want to be part of the result. Now, what you see here is, in essence, um, a code line that does a DB lookup with just variables. Um, so it parameterizes the DB lookup with class, cache, server, database, view, key, column, keywords. Another option would be to do a DB lookup towards the same database as the code lives in. So in essence, you would pretty much leave out all the parameters and just specify them as blank or kind of nothing. So we're not specifying a class, so it defaults to notes. We're not specifying cache options, so it defaults to no cache. We're not specifying the database. And here you have the same option actually underneath that then says um, server is blank and database is blank. That's the same as just saying all of that is blank. Then we have another option saying, instead of specifying the server and database as blank, we're specifying at db name. And lastly, we, we have um, you know, a formula code that then says, take a subset from db name one, um, followed by subset db name minus one, which in essence is interesting coding because uh, the above line would essentially be much easier. Uh, if you're not a developer, don't worry about it too much, but then most probably this part of the video is too technical anyway. Next one would be specifying a server and database as a variable. And by the way, it could also be just one variable that again contains a text list. Then we've got um, a DB lookup that uh, has a hard-coded server name in canonical format. Next one would be abbreviated format. So instead of specifying CN equals, etc., just saying server slash acme. And by the way, you could also have just a common name. So in many environments, you find code that just search for common name. The next one would be a DB lookup towards a user's mail server. Um, so by in that particular case, using getting the server name from the user's mail database, and then potentially opening a, a database there. Think of a phone book where you would always want to open the phone book uh, on each user's mail server. That could be one such thing. The next two lines just show that uh, someone could have, uh, you know, written out the class as notes in proper casing, or as you see in the next line, different casing, lowercase, uppercase, anything can be found. And as mentioned earlier, all the code searches are carried out case insensitive. Lastly, what you find here is the ability to spread a DB lookup across multiple lines, what we saw earlier for LotusScript. Here you now see for a DB lookup, whether you've got different tabbing in, in front of each line or you know, just same spacing in front of each parameter. That, in essence, makes code searching quite interesting, especially if the overall goal of your search would then be to you know, leave out certain stuff like, for example, you, maybe you don't want to look for any DB lookups that just look at the same database. Because what typically you are interested in when doing a code search is all DB lookups towards a database that is different from the one where the code lives in. So in that sense, what we want to build is a pattern that essentially um, finds server names, whether they are canonical, abbreviated, or common names, um, that find things like, um, you know, databases on users' mail servers um, that cope for different casing and also support searches across multiple lines. Now, in order to do that, we start with building a pattern that says um, enable multi-line searching. Also, for the reasons of completeness, we've added the case insensitive, which is on by default. And then we're searching for an at DB followed either by column or lookup. So that makes us search for db column or db lookup. The next thing that we search for then is the class being notes or nothing. Because you could also do a db lookup or a db column, for example, against different classes like ODBC, 
or similar things. The next thing is we're not interested in whatever the cache settings are. You may want to change that if you want to find out what the different cache options are that are used inside of your organization or whether there's a lot more no cache options being used um, versus caching options. Then we're opening up a bracket where we're saying the server and the database must not be whatever we uh, specify the next. And then we're getting a little bit complicated in saying, um, actually, the server and database must not be, and must not be. So we're doing a double negation, which is the question mark, exclamation mark. And we're saying it must either be in the end a string or a variable colon string. What it shouldn't be is just a variable. Um, because that wouldn't be a definite dependency, but it would be a possible dependency. What we're looking for with our code search is definite dependencies. The next thing is that we're doing is that we're saying any lookups that go to kind of nothing or nothing colon nothing, um, we also want to exclude. We're also excluding any DB lookup that just um, uses DB name as the lookup or column database. And the same goes for um, the interesting coding style of doing subset db name one colon subset db name minus one, which essentially is the same as above, but we just want to rule them out. And believe us, we've seen such things. We've analyzed a total of more than 10 million applications so far, and that uh, pretty much gets you um, into very interesting results. The last thing is that we're going to just make sure that uh, whatever follows after these parameters then is followed by at least one two more parameters, just in case somebody decided um, to um, you know, put something into a string and visualize that. Um, typically, um, or sometimes in code, you may find text strings where somebody said, um, you know, here's instructions of how to code for a DB lookup. And um, that just starts with the first few parameters. And this allows us to make sure that we've got at least a decent number of parameters specified for the DB columns and DB lookups that we want to visualize. Now there's two problems with the above um, kind of regular expression, which on its own is complicated enough. It's not really too complicated. Uh, it's halfway readable, uh, although you wouldn't spread it across multiple lines. I just, just so, so better under, understand it. But the major problems are that the DB lookup um, that we're now kind of looking for does not support white space which is important when later on we want to do the highlighting. Now let's just quickly visualize that back in, in Application Insights. And let's just search for EdDDB lookup. And we're going to do it like this and make our life a little bit easy here. And then we find a lot of different uh, DB lookups. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'll make sure that after the, the bracket open, I have at least one blank that already starts to get me somewhere. And I'll also make sure that I have another blank in front of the DB lookup, uh, the, the backup bracket, and we just find one single. And the problem here now is that whilst the search result is properly highlighted, the original code before stripping out all the white space or whatever looks totally different. So in that sense, um, just to show you this, what we have to do now is we have to say, well, before and after the bracket, we need any number of tabs or blanks, uh, which is the backslash S star question mark. So after doing just that, and I'm sorry, I have to actually fix this to not find everything, but just say I need at least um, some white space. And now stuff's going wrong because I've got another blank here and I have to do that. Now, the result is also properly highlighted. So whilst for searching, you don't have to cater for white space um, or similar things, for the highlighting, you do. So kind of creating a regular expression is a two-step approach, first getting your search right. And once you've done that, then further optimize it for proper highlighting, because there we visualize the original code. The second thing that this doesn't cater for are things like an EdDB lookup and then an escaped notes parameter, which you typically wouldn't code for in um, formula code directly. But think of a field that computes formula code, which later on is then evaluated by a LotusScript uh, evaluate. Uh, in that particular code, uh, case, the code would need to be escaped to compute the formula that you want to later on compute. 
So in order to do that, what we're going to do now is we will take this exact regular expression, which again shouldn't be all too complicated except for the double negation here. And we need to spread it out to make room for escaping for all the possible white space. Um, so there could be as many blanks or tabs as someone chose or new lines between you know certain things as we saw code can spread across multiple lines. Um, a quote needs to be escaped and we're doing exactly that here in kind of just in, in, inserting all the white space optional quotes and stuff like that, which as you can see is a many, many different backslash S star question mark, white space, um, followed by white space, and again, kind of an optional backslash, etc., etc., and that's pretty much it. Let's make that again clearer. And that then should explain why I some of the regular expressions that we deliver out of the box seem fairly complicated to read where they're actually not if you remove all of the possible white space that somebody could have added to the original code. The overall result of this is the pattern that is used for a definite dependency because it's not a variable. It is very clear that either the server or the database name are a file path um, or a replica ID or a server name. And we're removing any DB lookups and DB columns that are not going towards the same database. And we're supporting optional white space as well as escaping of the quote, just in case it comes up in your code. By the way, you could use this exercise to not make the escaping optional, but mandatory by just removing the question mark after the double, uh, double backslashes in this above pattern to then specifically look for any DB lookers from DB columns where um, a quote is escaped. Now, furthermore, <clears throat> let's recap a little bit of what we talked about. The modifier question mark I is on per default. So all searches are always case insensitive. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you search for notes, proper case, uppercase, lowercase, whatever, um, we'll just find it all. A dot also matches new lines, and that's not for text search, but only for regular expressions, what we're talking about here. This entire slide is exclusively about regular expressions. So whenever you type a dot, that doesn't mean we'll be looking for a dot, but for any character, and that also may include a new line. Backslash S also includes a new line, and you've previously seen backslash S star question mark or S plus question mark. Star question mark would mean any number of white space, so no white space to lots of white space. A backslash S plus question mark would mean um, at least one white space, so a blank or a tab or a new line, um, but could also be multiple. Backslash N naturally also matches new line. Carrot and dollar do not match new lines by default. So you have to turn that on through the before mentioned modifier question mark W. If you don't use question mark W, you are searching from the beginning of an entire code block to the end of an entire code block. And again, as a reminder, a code block could be sub-initialized, sub-click to the end of N sub respectively. Um, all the formula code in um, a field, uh, whether that's the default formula or other formula parts, for fields. So typically you will want to search across multiple lines, so enable question mark W. An exception would be if you are entirely sure that the code that you're looking for uh, only exists in um, the entire code block, as we saw earlier with the example of help. Also, don't forget to escape things like brackets and dots. Um, so for example, searching for at db lookup um, and then bracket open won't work. You have to ex escape the bracket open. That's because in regular expressions, normal round brackets um, are used for other things than um, specifying the round bracket, just as much as we've had it earlier with the dot. A dot isn't a dot, but any character. So backslash dot would be a dot. Now, before I continue to talk you to death, um, you know, um, with all these great features of regular expressions, um, there are many great resources to learn about regular expressions. One of our favorites is RegexBuddy uh, that we use extensively on our own. There's also great examples uh, without you having to download, uh, let alone buy RegexBuddy. 
um, to then read more about things like patterns for detecting IP addresses or um, credit card numbers or similar things. Um, all of that um, can be approached with regular expressions. And here's another page that also um, gives you eight good examples um, of what you should know around regular expressions. Whatever you try with regular expressions, please again bear in mind that we're talking about TCLR expressions, so uh, that means you can't do everything that you can, for example, do in Perl. Um, just to mention two specifics, you can't do look behind, you can also um, not do any back references and look ahead. Um, if that makes you wonder what that this actually is, again, read up on it um, on a couple of things, but again, also don't get scared. If you want to know more about the details and uh, specifics um, of TCLR, then you may want to just open up the PostgreSQL link that gives you more details in the section POSIX syntax details. If you made it until here, let me tell you, you're awesome. If you didn't make it until here, you're awesome too, but you're most likely never going to hear this. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure and great fun, and we hope to hear from you. And um, wish you a lot of fun in getting going with application insights and custom insights and code search. Thank you. Bye-bye.